Hey, what's up, guys? It's Josh with Paparazzi Imaging and Films. This is the Vignette Podcast, episode 15, and we have Bradley Barrett here from Warner Racing and also an active IWA watercross racer. Um, it's I'm super stoked to have him on the show. He actually reached out to me to be on the show, so welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so... I don't have any questions in front of me. I came on a little unprepared, but I, I will kind of want to do an off the cuff kind of deal. Yep. Um, so let's start off with being here at Warner. So you, you said before the show that you've been here for a long time. What, 11 years, you said? Yep. Just shy of 11 years. I've done multiple different roles for them. I started off working on the shows and events side, doing a lot of traveling around the country, uh, training dealership staff, doing demo events. Uh, and then I transitioned into running the parts department for all the snowcross racers. So you see me at every snowcross race in the parts trailer. <laughs> Running around like a chicken yep. with a head cut off. Well, I'm, I'm pretty stuck in that trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Most of the other guys either running around uh, just because I know where the inventory is at and the billing process and stuff like that. So I just pretty much stay put. Nice, nice. Yeah. So you kind of you get to stay warm than than the other guys. Do. Yep, <laughs> yep. And my brother was the poor soul last year who got to go outside and do all the cold stuff. Or Thomas when he's out taking the pictures. Right. And you know how brutal it is out there. Oh yeah, it's cold, especially when we're at Fargo and stuff like that. Fargo is brutal. Yeah, just yeah. brutal. <laughs> so how is how is working the parts parts uh, department with Warner and stuff like that? It's great. Um, I like helping out other racers. I got a really good bond with most of the guys who run snowcross. Um, pretty much hang out with them after the races. Anybody that's a customer of ours, so it's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. You get to hang out with all the racers. You yep. don't even have to ask for autographs. No, no. <laughs> yeah, you can go out to eat with all of them. Yeah, mostly the smaller time guys. To yeah. be honest, you know, like um, say Powers Motorsports, Helmerson, McCurdy's, mm -hmm. you know, all those guys, uh, Freeland too. Yeah. So all the skidoo guys. Yeah, the, the skidoo <laughs> guys basically. Yep. That's cool. That's cool. So, um, how is how is the dynamic between watercross and snowcross? Because you you don't you don't race snowcross. You just you just do the parts and then you race in the summertime doing the iwa right? yep uh besides i did randomly get a hair last year to run a snowcross race and troy powers put me on a sled the wednesday before at erx for the first time on a track was that during a national no no it was just a wednesday night practice oh okay but i was the only not pro there <laughs> <laughs> so Great. i got Good like time. oh God, this is cool uh -huh. you know uh, I didn't feel too bad besides the rhythm section. That was like, I'm going to die. Yeah. Um, Did you hold your breath? Uh, I just kind of bounced my way on through. <laughs> and, uh, but then we were doing the sled check, and uh, it needed a part that I couldn't personally replace overnight. Uh, so I called up Brian McCurdy while Ava was hurt. I'm like, hey, what's the chances? He's like, yeah, no problem. Come get it. Yeah. Uh, so and ran the WASA uh, Regional. On mm -hmm. um, the plus thirty class and took a second actually. Yeah, I think I remember seeing you there. I remember yeah. seeing the Barrett on the back of the jersey. Yeah, and the nice pink sled. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Are you gonna do that race again this this season? Uh, we'll see. It was fun. Um, Stick to watercross. Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> yeah, especially now with the baby girl and stuff. Um, with how much I'm already gone for snowcross probably won't push it with more weekends being gone yeah that's a brutal schedule yeah that's a brutal schedule yeah you you got to be what only home like one or two weekends out of the out of the year uh it's in the winter you know where it's like every other weekend we're gone for snow cross mm -hmm. um you know now with water cross i end up being gone eight times just for races plus all the different times to go to michigan and test yeah because uh all my stuff's still back in michigan although i'm here what? Yep. Why in Michigan? Uh, that's where my family's at and the whole rest of the team. I really got into watercross because uh, I moved down here, actually, and my dad wanted to build a sled. Yep. I was like, you know what? Now that I'm not living up there, I don't see you guys much. It's a perfect opportunity for me to get to see the friends and family. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, actually, I gave up moto and switched into watercross. Oh, wow. Yep. Wow. How long did you race moto for? 
I raced when I was younger for quite a few years and then we just couldn't afford it. And then at 18 when I was working, I bought a bike again, raced for three years, and then I started working at Warner and that kind of killed my racing. Mm -hmm. uh, just with all the traveling, I was I, spent, I more or less spent eight years living on the road in hotels. Isn't it nice? It, it, it was <laughs> nice because, uh, I mean, growing up in the UP, basically grew up poor. Wow, so you were way up in Michigan. Oh, yeah. Holy you can crap. only go 30 miles further. Yeah. Yep. So, super small town. I think there's 300. I graduated with 16 kids in my class. Jeez. So, working here has been great because I've been everywhere. I've I've been to almost every state, especially mm -hmm. continental, mm -hmm. um, and done a lot of super cool things that I never would have gotten a chance to do, so... I guess it doesn't, the, the payoff working at Warner doesn't, isn't too bad. Yeah, it was know? definitely work, you know, and like you lose out on the other aspects of life, you know, friends are going to concerts or festivals and yeah. like, well, I'm at a mud event, but I'm working till 10 o'clock, right. you know? but it was, it was definitely fun. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people can relate to that, you know, especially like the pro athletes nowadays, like, you know, let's say, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, racing moto uh brian uh what's it why, why can't i think of his name um 238 oh like deegan yeah, yeah deegan oh, danger yeah boy. yeah exactly yeah. like that he started out at such a young age and he you know he he just graduated at freaking red but i think it was yeah you know and that that's like you know he never got to experience prom or school dances or anything like that right you know yep there's definitely some give and some take there um and then we had started to, we weren't as busy in the summer, so I got back in the race of motocross with all of my buddies. Uh, I was doing way better than I did before I quit racing. It was kind of weird. <laughs> Recharged right? the batteries a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Also, I came back and I'm like, whoa, I'm actually fast at this. This is weird. <laughs> um, but then at the end, pretty much towards the end of the season, I was at just a random fair race, just getting seat time and ended up breaking my toe, of all things. Yeah. You don't, don't you wear boots? I did. Garner <laughs> SG12s, broken yeah. toe and a really sprained ankle, and that was it for the season. And then, like I said, the next year the sleds were being built and made the jump over. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So have you been on a bike recently? Um, I still have my bike. I actually have it up for sale finally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only rode it like a handful of times last year. Mm -hmm. still feel great on it. It's weird. It's like... You never really lose it. No. You lose the endurance, but that's about it. Yeah. So. Does the does the sled give you the same adrenaline rush? Yeah. Um. Especially like I kind of race a little more aggressively than a lot of guys. Like I take different lines. I do some weird stuff out there, so I still get a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Especially with running Le Mans, mm -hmm. um, where I get to hit jumps and stuff. Um, but kind of the big thing is like I'll never be great at moto. Like yeah. I'll always be mediocre, where in like watercross, I got a chance to be really, really good. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of a force behind it too. And like I said, the whole friends and family is a massive part of it. Right. Like our team, we got back into this five years ago. My cousin and his dad, the Mariettas, and Teddy Lori, um, randomly decided to get back into it. And since those three, the next year, I think it turned into eight or nine of us. And now there's 17 guys on the team. Holy crap. Yep. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of hotel rooms. Well, that's what's nice about watercross <laughs> is uh, we can camp. That's true, that's, yeah. Honestly, that's the main reason why none of us ever got in the snow cross. It was just the expense with the hotels. Mm -hmm. And plus, coming from the UP, we always had great riding. You know, if you look, most snowcross racers are out of Wisconsin, Minnesota, lower Michigan, right. where they have low snow levels, where they got to go to a track or something to be able to ride. Mm -hmm. So, you don't see many snowcross racers out of the UP. Colleen's about the only one. Yeah, yeah, and the closest one would be, what, Anderson's and the Goikis? Uh... I think Boone and them are further north okay. than like Anderson's and Goikis in lower Michigan. Yeah. But even still, they're, you know, lower Michigan. Right, right. Seven, eight hours from where I live. Where yeah. I lived. <laughs> so. That's crazy. So, so is, there, is there a lot of watercross going on in the UP? Uh, so we do have our actual annual race up there. 
Mm -hmm. um, that's I think we're going on our fourth year of that. Basically, once we all started racing, we're like, hey, this is a great thing to bring to our area. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually use it as a fundraiser for the fire department. The Lake Linden Fire Department puts it on oh, that's cool. as a fundraiser for them. Yep. That's awesome. And it draws a big, big crowd up there, actually. Yep. I remember during COVID, they had like a thousand person limit or something. And they had to start turning people away because we had hit the limit already. Mm -hmm. So it's good. Wow. Wow. I might have to go up and check that out. It's beautiful up there. Yeah. I've only been to, oh, I don't even remember, uh, but it was somewhere in Michigan. I went to Redbud at that time. Mm -hmm. um, it was right after COVID. Uh, I moved to Minnesota in 2020, and, and I do believe that's when I went up to Michigan. I could be wrong. I don't remember, you know, there's so many things that I'm doing. I always forget, right. but you know, um, but yeah, I, I've, I've been, uh, what is it? The, one of the sand dunes that the, one of the major sand dunes over oh, Silver Lake. Yeah. Silver Lake. Yep. Yeah. That's where I was. I've actually never gone there. Really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like seven hours from where I grew up. So mm -hmm. never made the trip down. Um, I did go to Glamour's once on my bike. That was cool. Oh, man. How was that? It was awesome. We had to go there for, I think it was Halloween for Can-Am. Mm -hmm. uh, and I decided to drive out with my truck. Um, got to ride in Glamour's for a couple of days. And my buddy was in the Navy, actually, then in California. Yeah. So then after, I stayed with him for a week. We went and rode like Cahia, Paris. Um, when we were at Paris, we were riding with Kobe Raha. That oh, was heck super yeah. cool. That guy's wild. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> Didn't he just win X Games? Again, yeah. yeah, yeah, at um, at the Hodges compound, right? I I didn't watch it to be honest, but I just I seen that he had won. I think um, the quarter pipe again. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of his jam now. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, just crazy. coming up and looking down. Right. Like, what if you don't make that that landing? Dude, and even the jumps at that track in Paris, they were all like quarter pipe. It was they were so massive. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> moto guys are insane <clears throat> yeah they're next level and then they say snowcross guys are crazy because we do what we do yeah you know i think they're, every anything with anything that to, to do with a motor is insane yeah they're both crazy uh i think there's a little more maybe style in moto in like supercross right like yeah. with line choice and stuff where a lot of snow crosses, how much abuse you can take and just stay on the gas, it feels like. Yeah. Those guys are just slamming stuff. <laughs> like, those holes get so deep. You go and walk the track after, you're like, how did you get through here? Right. Like, right. This would swallow me. Yeah. <laughs> did you Did you happen to go to the uh, Levi Tri-5? I did not make it up there. Um, I definitely wanted to. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one thing that I'd love to get my cousin Jimmy. Uh, to pair it up with because we love running those old old sleds yeah yeah uh, like there was years ago um there's this group called xcon free ride okay um they're out of the up they were like our idols growing up right mm -hmm. like they're like the sled next but kind of lower level yeah and they did this um basically cross-country race through the woods and it was super late spring, so we showed up with this old Polaris XC700, and we pulled up. Everyone's laughing at us, right? <laughs> There's like two Warner race sleds just purchased from here yep. after the snow cross season, a bunch of others. There's a couple of cats. We whomped everybody, whomped them on that XC700. Holy crap. Uh, That's funny. Was well, it just riding skill? A lot of it was like... There's a lot of dirt and water and slush. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where they're worried about hurting their sled, we didn't care, just kept it wicked. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, that old sled would just slide around where, like, the newer ones would want to catch an edge in that stuff. And yeah, kind of Because they were kind of top heavy. Yeah. And plus, my cousin's a wild man on that thing, dude. <laughs> we got a GoPro video of it, and he's just licked for, like, his, I mean, there's a good stretch in the back where that sled is wide open. Just screaming. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Yeah. Afterwards, everyone's like, next year we're buying those. <laughs> <laughs> I told you so. Yep. That's funny. That's funny. So, yeah, you you, you definitely got to come out to the Tri-5. I was, I was there this past year, or this past one, just to check it out. I didn't even shoot or anything like that. And the holes at that thing... Like there was ponds mm -hmm. that guys were going in and they were just, some of the sleds weren't coming out. Yeah. It was insane. 
That's so up in Michigan, our local snowmobile club has always done this endurance race mm -hmm. where it's one hour around the motocross track. Screw that. One hour straight. And like by the like end Like no of breaks it, or nothing? Well, you got to get gas, so, right? In the, you can make it the whole hour in a full tank. Um, <laughs> oh but God. you can have a teammate, right? Yeah. So we typically run teams. Um, but the same thing, the holes are so massive. Like, you can barely walk for a week after. You hurt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of ibuprofen yeah, and ice. Yeah, yeah. But we've, uh, we've pretty much dominated that. Mm -hmm. um, same with, like, two-up racing. Oh, That's, we man. are undefeated in two-up racing. But that's just because he'll, he's hit jumps with me on the back wide open. I'm like, we have no suspension, man. Yeah, right? It's already bottomed yeah. out. Screw that. We're on an Indy 500 and you just hit that tabletop at 50. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You, I, I, would, I would be surprised that your back would be hurting more than his. Yeah. It's, uh, so far I've have been pretty lucky you know with that kind of racing mm -hmm. i actually did end up hurting my back last fall uh kind of a fluke thing was, during watercross no i was actually out doing a can-am demo event um weird yeah the trail was just really nasty and after four days of running that whooped out trail my mm -hmm. back just had enough um ended up my disc was out like a centimeter and a half wow. to where it was pushed on the nerves and my whole leg was going numb I was super worried. I thought my racing career was done. Holy like, crap. Like, it freaked me out so bad. Uh -huh. uh, but went to Spot Rehab, which is where my wife works. We got physical therapy there, and it's been great. Nice. Actually, that snow cross last year was like the big test, right? It was right, <laughs> it was right towards the end of my physical therapy. I'm like, well, if we can do this, we're golden. Right, and right. And it didn't hurt. Well, so that's good. It's been good. But I definitely make sure I stretch and stuff now, you know, like getting old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can't be that old. 32. Oh, geez. Yeah. Jeez, you're two years older than me. Yeah. Everyone's like, you're not that old. I tell them, like, no way. Yeah, you look like you just graduated high school. I got that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's like good, said, though. You've been got here 11 years. Right? Well, you got good genes. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I get from a lot of people. So... What, so how uh how is the the um the events part of working here at warner's is that like fun kind of you get to relax a little bit or is it still go 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 um when it comes to events it's definitely still work mm -hmm. um but there is fun side to it too right um you know like there's a lot of times so i specialize in dealer training that was like what i mainly did so i traveled around with like two three trailers we would have, you know, say 10 Can-Ams, and then we'd have the direct best competitive unit to it. Mm -hmm. And we would take dealers out just riding all day. They would ride a Can-Am, and then they'd say ride a Honda Pioneer, mm -hmm. if that was the comparison. Uh, so salesmen could get true real-world experience riding the machines. Right. Um, so that was what I mostly did. So that was fun. That's pretty cool. You know, I did a lot of the designing the courses, setting up the ride, um, so I got a lot of seat time. Dang. Yeah. So you get to play around a lot. I did for a while. That's cool. Yeah. So like all those, what, the four seater side by sides and. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's yep. wicked so, cool. So like, I mean, I've been to Glamis, I've been to St. Anthony, I've been to all the big mud events besides Tyler, Texas. Somehow I've never made it to that mud nationals. In 11 years you haven't made it out there? Not to that one. <laughs> it's like the only one. Well, you better tell the Warner right. boys to get you out there. Yeah. Moab a couple times. Moab's awesome. That's sweet. Uh, the coolest thing I've ever gotten to do, though, for Warner was back in 2019, I led a Skidoo demo tour. Mm -hmm. uh, so I spent 15 weeks out in the mountains riding six days a week. Holy crap. That It was a lot of work, but that was the most fun I've ever had working here. That was awesome. That's sweet. Yeah. Um, sleds has always been my thing. and Yeah. So to get to ride 15 different mountain locations was awesome. Hell then yeah. I got to ride with all the Skidoo ambassadors. So I rode a Manaberry, Jenkins, Mercier. I was just going to say. Ashley Chafin. Yeah. She rips. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that name. I know Manaberry. Uh, so Ashley's probably, I'd say she's the top chick rider. 
Okay. Um, she's out of Alaska, uh, and she grew up with like the Turnigan boys, so okay. grew up hitting big jumps and stuff. So she ain't afraid to send it. No, she gets after it. Like we were in Sea Lake, and I found a nice little like downhill, probably seventy footer off a of drift, mm -hmm. and I went and hit it, and I turned around. And here she came right behind me. I was like, "Wow, all right." That's badass. And she kept right up in the trees the whole time. Yeah. That's badass. The mountain riding is insane. Oh yeah, yeah. Have you ever been to Wyoming, Jackson Hole? Uh, so I've been to the hill climbs out there. Um, one of these years I would like to run it. Mm -hmm. I've done a couple random hill climbs in Michigan and I've uh, been right there in qualifying to go. Um, so you got the never... skills to pay the bills, huh? Uh, I do okay. <laughs> yeah. That's badass. I've never been there. I was only there for the two years that we went to Snowcross. I was there for that. Yeah. Uh, but when, I didn't get to see any of it. When and Renheim so, was on the yep. team still? Instead, we were parked looking at the Polaris trailer the whole time. Yeah. So we just threw up gang signs back and forth <laughs> for each other. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, that was like, that was some tight parking there. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. I know the town loved it more than like, say, the hill climbs. Uh, yeah. Just because the crowd was different. Like, the hill climbs get to rowdy I heard, in town. I heard the rowdy. town didn't like the snow cross. From what the I people heard. that I had talked to liked it just um, mostly because like the people were more respectful, right? Mm. Than say the hill climbs because the hill climbs draws both good and bad crowd. Yeah, right? you get the guys who are just there to party for the whole week, right? And it can get a little rowdy. Yeah, and you know normally that's a pretty quiet kind of ritzy town. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is. It's very money driven and very, you know, yeah. it's getting insane. Yeah. As far as some of the prices out there, like it, most local people have kind of been pushed out now. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I got a couple of friends that that live up there, and and I see their stuff on social media once in a while. But it's uh, it's definitely becoming a like less people living there. I would say, mm. you know, more richy type people. Yeah. Which isn't bad, you know. Whatever, if you got the money to live up there, I, I would live up there. It's oh. Freaking beautiful. Yeah, amazing. You know. Seeing the mountain goats, seeing the freaking, what is it, <clears throat> Yellowstone's up there too? Uh, Yellowstone's not too far. Not too far. Um, but you got the, the the hills up there, what are they called? The, Togedy. Yeah, Togedy. Yep. And then what's the other ones too? Uh, the Bighorns are right there as well. Yeah, yeah. So like I, the last time I was out there, I was contracted just as a truck driver. Oh, okay. Basically, I just hauled the stuff out, and then I got to kind of do whatever for the week. Mm -hmm. uh, the dealer actually hooked me up with a demo sled, and I went out riding. I rode in Togedy one day, and then a local bouncer took me to a spot up in the Bighorns. That was pretty legit. That's badass. Yeah. That's badass. So, that was cool. Would you say that doing the dealer shows is fun, like as fun as racing, or more, or less? Um... Because you pretty much do everything. Yeah, I prefer racing, honestly. <laughs> like, um, and just kind of more having fun than just doing it for work. But, mm -hmm. I mean, if you got to work, that's it's not a bad way to do it. No. So. No, if you, get to, if you get to get paid to have fun. Yeah, I don't do much of it anymore. I'm pretty much just a parts department now. Yeah. Um, especially now that I got a baby, so. Yeah. How old are you? How old are you? She's seven months. Wow! Congrats, man. Thank you. She is. She's something else. That's awesome. Yeah. That's got to give you a little bit more of a spark to, uh, you know, keep going and. Oh yeah, it's awesome coming off from a race and getting to see her and hang out there for a bit and it was definitely cool. She loves it. Mm hmm So. Is she gonna come to any snowcross races this year? Um, most likely she'll probably end up like Canterbury and ERX, be nice and close. Yep. Typically the wife comes down for those two. Yeah. We like to try and get the flame picture at Canterbury every year, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Heck yeah. Those are fun. I can't wait to see what the schedule is like for this year at yeah. Snowcross. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think there's a big question around Fargo, right? Yeah, I definitely won't be on the schedule. Which <laughs> I'm not going to complain. I have had terrible experiences with Fargo in that cold. <laughs> I think everybody has. Oh, man. The one year I was leaving to come back, and I blew a tire just outside of Fargo. Were you driving the semi? No, I was driving my own personal oh, truck okay. and blew a tire. And, of course, it was an older Chevy, so you couldn't get the spare tire down. Right? And I called the tow truck, told them that. The guy comes out, and he's like, we'll get it. Madison went there for a while, and he's like, I, I, I got to load you up, man. I'm like, dude, 
I got to get home. It's four o'clock in the morning. It was oh. minus 40 degrees, and we're laying under my truck for three hours on the side of the road. He loaded me up, brought me back to their shop. He's like, I'm not supposed to do this, but put the truck in, cut it down, and got me on my way. I think I got home at like 6.30 in the morning. Oh, my God. It was brutal. Oh. But luckily, I had my snow gear in the truck because yeah. I think I was just coming back from mountain riding, actually. Okay. So I had like all my snow gear and it didn't help. It just Jeez. cut right through it because yeah. mountain gear is so light. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you don't have any, you don't have an inner shell on there, right? Right. Oh. Wow, that sucks. Yeah, so yeah. screw Fargo for you. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm over it. <laughs> you might want to go in the summertime because it's really nice down there yeah. or over there. It's really nice. I got a buddy that lives over in Fargo, and he, he actually worked for the Finnish team doing their media stuff, and and I visit him once in a while. And, um, yeah, it's always a good time. They got yeah. some damn good street tacos. Yeah, there's a guy down there that – he I'm actually all about the street tacos. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. yeah. He him and his brother, his brother I think does like hot dogs or something. Mm -hmm. And he does tacos and they he has like the shredded beef. It's marinated in some some kind of sweet. I don't know what it is, but he has a cart that he yeah. takes downtown. And at a certain time, I think it's like seven to ten. And that's the only hours that he's open. Mm -hmm. And it is kick butt, dude. I bet. Yeah, kick butt. You know where that Fargo sign is downtown? I think so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's over by that way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If I ever get that way, I'm going to have to be back. It's 7 o'clock. Yeah. Get those tacos. Heck yeah. <laughs> you can't miss it, dude. It's just like a little It's a little shack. He's got a big, huge advertisement for it, too. Perfect. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. But, um, yeah, mm -hmm. so... It, your brother races too? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so my brother's a year younger. Um, he started a year after me. Um, basically, my first year, um, me and my dad shared a sled. And mm -hmm. We were building it throughout the summer. We didn't get it fully working until pretty much the last round. Okay. Got it finally dialed. And then we picked up a chassis. And I was working down here already at that point. My brother was still in Michigan. Uh, and he was putting in all the work on building the sled with my dad. Mm -hmm. And then an 800 mod went up for sale. Um, and my dad's like, should we just get this? And I was like, sure. Screw so, it. Let's so go. So we picked up that sled. And then the one that they were building became my brother's. Okay. So we that second year, all three of us raced. Um, I had a lot of problems with that 800 that I picked up. It basically killed my first two rounds of racing oh, that we finally got it working right before Grantsburg. did good there on it went to lake linen did great in the morning and then on i think my second heat the crank sawed right through the motor oh no so then we had to put a brand new motor in it and then it did get the final brainerd and then ended up offloading it Really? And then I went back to my original sled that my dad had raced that year and mm -hmm. raced that all of last year. Um, up until we picked up the 800 mod that uh, GLH had built, mm -hmm. um, which once we got that, I moved up to Pro Open on that one. Jeez. So. How many people was in Pro Open? Uh, actually, at Grantsburg, there was 19 of us signed up. Yeah, it was big. Uh, even the first Brainerd, there were 16. Uh, last year the numbers were down and I there was a couple people that just I think decided to move up just because mm -hmm. um, the numbers were low and they could you know make it to the next day right um, but then both me and Grant Whitaker moved up um, Austin Lasky got bumped up after winning Grantsburg um, points or something so if you win at Grantsburg in the semi pro class you move up to pro it's kind of mm. like the thing okay um, and then of course, so it's like an automatic. Yep. Oh, interesting. It, it is a protestable advancement. Uh -huh. That one is, um, most guys just do it. Yeah. Um, and like Lasky, he, I think he started bracing before me. So him protesting, it wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. you know, he, he's doing, he's doing good. He hasn't built a full mod yet, but his stock is fast. He's, you know, Fisher built it for him. Okay. Uh, so it's so he's on a players too. Yeah. He's on a player safe 50. Um, He's been around for a couple of years now. Nice. Like I say, he runs in both pro stock, pro open, and he competes in both classes just fine on it. Nice. Um, Mac and Dens was another one who got moved up. Um, I thought he was kind of taking the year off, and then he showed up to Grandsburg <laughs> with the new 850, and 
Uh, so he's still working out the bugs on that one. Yep. Uh, Grant's got a new 900 built by Bikeman, super mm-hmm. fast. Uh, like at Grantsburg, me, uh, David, and Grant were all tied uh, for qualifying. Um, and then both me and Grant had mechanical issues and both ended up out of the final. Oh, man. Yeah. That sucks. So, yeah, it was a super bummer. Um, but that's racing. Yeah. yeah. Hundred percent. That is. I've only been. To, I've only been to one watercross event, and it was last year at Brainerd. Mm-hmm. But how is the competition? Is it? You mentioned that there was nineteen guys at the last race, or, or at the the one race, and then it kind of like tails off. Is it? Is it? Are the numbers consistent, or is it? Grantsburg always has the highest attendance because okay. um, he'll draw some out east guys and pull a couple guys out just because it's the world championship, right? Okay. Um. Like so Lennon, that's the one I need to go to. Yeah, that's the one for okay. sure. Um, I was I was told to go to the one in Michigan. Michigan's very very good race. Um, numbers not as high as we'd like them, which is really a bummer because like my whole group makes the drive to every race, mm-hmm. and like all the people who are from around here, you got to make one long trek and you you can't do it. Yeah. Like, we make five. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? <laughs> uh, but it's getting better just because, like, everybody who's been knows, like, it's an awesome event. Um, it draws a crowd. They get bands for each night. Oh, that's you know? wicked. Yep. Ely does the same thing. They get a band. So does Grantsburg. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of what we were talking earlier before we were on camera. We're, like, you know, we're starting to play around some other race sets who try and bring in spectators and grow the sport. Right. You know? so yeah there was there wasn't a lot when i went to brainerd it was kind of a bummer yeah it's but it was also raining that weekend too yeah it was super rainy and cold at a terrible weekend and wasn't there a wasn't there something going on at the racetrack or something like that they typically do have another event going on at the same time whether it's somebody like the drag racing or drift cars there's always at least another event right um to try and i guess get some of that intermingling going but I think everyone's so busy with their own event that it just doesn't happen, really. Right, right. I um, so, they should stop doing that then. You no, know, like, even we did Lakes Jam this year. Mm-hmm. Um, the IWA has a couple racers go up. We run around on the pond throughout the day. And, yeah, you know, there was a couple of people who came, lined up around the pond, watch what we were doing. But not as many as you would have hoped with how many people were there. Right. But also, you know, at that time, they had golf carts and i mean the right. lawnmower racing and all this other stuff going on yeah so it kind of nobody really took interest to the water cross. yeah that but sucks i think and a lot of the guys kind of just brought their stalkers too mm-hmm. i brought my mom and let it sing around the pond so. <laughs> that's badass <clears throat> yeah. it's almost like fargo when we were there all friday was free and nobody showed up yeah you know so it's i don't know the other thing that is kind of a bummer about Brainerd is the pond size, right? Yeah, it's small. So Brainerd's the only one that we can't run the Mons at, uh-huh. where we do the multiple corners and the jump. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, I think, really growing with the spectators. Like, it's something different. They're like, hell yeah. Not only can you go right, I mean, you can go left, you can hit the jump too. Right. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Uh, and like, Ely and Lake Linden are both on nice big lakes. Mm-hmm. So super easy for us to have a nice massive course yeah yeah that's cool that's cool so they play the favor of having water cross at those events oh yeah they're like diehards for it yep that's really cool yeah and also like glennon race uh the volunteers are um wives or parents from guys on our team so oh. i think a lot of that is the same with ely where it's kind of the same ordeal Mm-hmm. that's pretty cool yeah i kind of I wish, I wish sports were more like that and not like people that are like coming in that don't know anything about the sport, you know, even like motocross, supercross, snowcross, whatever the case may be. It's like more people there. Other people are trying to get into the sport that have no idea what it is, you know, mm-hmm. and then they're just like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? Help me out. Well, I hired you. You got to figure it out. Yeah. You know? So, kind of along those lines, um, I think that's where watercross really shines as a racing sport, is it's so open to helping people. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, the newest guy on our team, 
is just a guy that bought my brother's sled. Yep. Nice guy. Asked for someone to test. Came up, tested with us. And now he runs at every race with us. We help him out. Yeah, see, that's cool, though. He's he's willing to learn. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to say that people that want to come in don't want to learn. It's just people that are, like, just... I don't know, per se, just wanting to be there to be there, not mm -hmm. trying to learn anything. But if he's, if people are learning, then that's cool. Yeah. You know, and, and he's racing. That's yeah. even better. You know, oh, that's yeah. more people on the track. Yeah. He made it to the Sunday in Grantsburg, which great for his first time there. Mm -hmm. um, he's an older guy, first time running ovals. Um, yeah. That's kind of one of my favorite parts about watercross is how friendly everyone is. Mm hmm. You know, like, say, take me and Grant Whitaker, for example. We've been kind of head-to-head against each other yeah. ever since we started. <laughs> like, one of us moves up, the other one moves up, too. Like, boom, boom, boom. We're always battling. Right. But still good friends. Like, um, pretty much everybody gets along. I don't think anyone's got a problem with anybody at watercross. It's, yeah. It's really cool dynamic. The rivalry stays on the water. It stays it doesn't on the water. Stay, it doesn't... Yep. That's cool. Yeah. We all race hard. Um... We all try and keep it clean, obviously, because we all got work on Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't get a lot of dirty incidents where guys get upset. Um, so, yeah, hmm. it's really good. That's sweet. And how is it racing against uh, uh, Fisher there? Fisher's tough. He, I mean, he's been the king of watercross for years. He's got great equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a great rider. So... That's kind of like the goal. Everyone's goal is beat David. Yeah. So <laughs> I've only done it once, and I've crashed six times trying. So. Oh man. Yep. Wow. Is he's just that consistent? Yep. He's very good. Um, he's been at it for a long time though, right? Yeah, and his dad was a former world champ too. Mm -hmm. His dad was always a top guy in the sport. Um, so yeah, he's this stuff's dialed, and it, it helps too. He's got players right yeah. he's he's the one guy in watercross that truly has a backing mm -hmm. i would say you know bikeman does help you know they've helped me with some stuff they help mccurdy whitaker they help a lot of guys but right. no one's at that level of where david's at mm -hmm. um, he's so you're saying he has like factory support yep okay yep he's the only one as, i mean as far as i know yeah um but i mean he's definitely earned it he's got the results to show it yeah you know, at Grantsburg, my team uh, took home three of the world championships. Mm -hmm. David took the other three. Oh, man. Right? So. Jeez. Yep. That's, yeah, I would say that's a challenge. Yeah, he's definitely got it dialed. Um, since I've been racing four years, I've only seen him straight up lose. You know, like didn't have a sink or some weird mechanical failure three times mm. in four years that's a, i mean that's heat races even that's impressive that's a lot of races that you're winning yeah yeah i mean he's got like tucker hibbert stats <laughs> 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 probably even better honestly jeez yeah that's a that's a uh, that's an accomplishment in itself yep i need to talk to him about that i need yeah, to have him on the podcast he's dominant that's for sure jeez uh, and that's, you know, me and Grant push each other and, um, you know, I, I was one of those losses. Grant was another. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're starting to get close to him, um, but still some work to be done. He He's upping the level every single year when you guys are chasing him, but the, you're getting close, but he's like, yeah. he's keeping you at bay. Right. That's like, that's got to be annoying, but also fun at the same time because it's, you know, you're playing that Tom and Jerry game with him and it's you're right there you can taste it yeah you know? and that that was a lot of why i was really disappointed in grantsburg was so i'm one of the few pros on a skidoo left pretty much everybody's jumped to polaris well what about um, mccurdy mccurdy jumped to polaris too no way yep mccurdy's on a bikeman polaris 900 mod now too what about ava well, Ava's on a skidoo, no? Ava was on a skidoo last time she raced. She isn't currently racing. Yeah. Um, so I'm not injury. sure. I'm sure she'll come back to the skidoo that mm -hmm. she has. Um, but in the pro open class specifically, you can go up to a 900 mod. Uh -huh. And there's not really a 900 mod for skidoo. 
Right. And the Polaris 900 mods are pretty dialed, especially, you know, with David's had a couple of them already. And then Sean Zern at GLH has built five or six of them that are racing right now. Yeah. So pretty much everyone's on a 900 mod but me. Jeez. I got a 100 twin pipe mod. Um, and the main reason why I like Grantsburg is pretty disappointing was... So the 900s will leave me on the beach pretty easy. They got way more torque. Mm -hmm. But I've got more horsepower on the top end. And with that real long run to the second buoy to where we actually start doing our ovals, it allowed me to get right back up on those guys. So me and David would have had a drag race into that buoy. Mm. And then we'll see where it shakes out from there. Right, right, right. Because right. <laughs> a lot of water crosses the whole shot. Yeah. A lot of it is. A lot of guys are not good at passing or riding in waves. Um that's kind of where my specialty is, I guess. Yeah. You know, like last year I ran the whole season on a 600 mod, so pretty under horsepower. And even this year in pro stock, I've had to run it because I can't get my 850 quite working yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got to get creative and different stuff. Like I, the one time I beat David was on my 600 mod, but it was just because I had a very smart move at the first corner. So and he was on an 800? Or he an was on an 850. And you beat him on a 600? Yeah, and so it was Grant. So it was me, David, and Grant in a heat race. And we've all been, us three, like I said, we've been battling hard, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Grant had lane one, David was in two. And I told every all my crew at the line, I'm like, watch this. <laughs> when we take off, those two are going to be in such a drag race that they're going to go past that first buoy before they make their corner. And I'm going to come from the outside, tuck under them, and be gone. And that's what I did, and it worked out perfect. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. that's. Did you have a GoPro on that at that point? I don't think I did. Typically, no. if I wear a GoPro, I screw up. Oh, <laughs> like, you're, so. you're one of those yeah. ones? Okay. I don't know why. I got you. Does anybody have that on film or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, we got it on film, yeah. That's got to be sweet. Yeah. Uh, and two against two 850s, and you're yeah. on a 600. 600 mod, yeah. Wow. Wow. But 600 mod, we call it our, my unicorn. Because mm -hmm. it's just, ever, the first year we struggled a little bit with it, but ever since then, we don't touch it. It's, it just the magic goes. comes out. Yeah. <laughs> I and mean, you got to ride the brakes off of it, that's for sure. Like, oh. I definitely, multiple times, I'm like, I'm going to die. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Especially in that race, because, like, you don't really see it in the video. But so with watercross sleds, our rear flap. Mm -hmm. If you notice on the right side, there's a, a strap to it. Or, yeah, strap. So that basically acts as that rudder, right? Helps you plant in the corner. Mm -hmm. If that breaks, your sled can come around on you. Right. Mine broke in the second corner. So a lot of the oh, race, no. I'm slipping and sliding around, but without a flap, you are faster. So. It's oh, really? Of, yeah. Oh, because you have that drag. You got less drag, yeah. yeah. So. The whole race, I'm like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But you came out on top? Yep, came out on top. Yep. So I guess it was worth all the stress and yep. headache. Yeah, it was def <laughs> that's probably my highlight of like my best race, I feel like. Just yeah, Just because like, sure. that one was super cool to finally get one on them. Uh -huh. I mean, I still haven't gotten another one on them. So. Maybe you should hop back on the 600. That's what I've been racing so far. And uh, at Grantsburg, I would... I was the only one right on him in the corner, but then I stopped it a little bit, and you give him a hair, he's gone. Yeah. He's gone. You got to be perfect. You got to be flawless. For me to beat him on the 600, I have to be flawless, and he has to make a mistake. Right. That's basically how it is. And you can't you can't be behind him and, make, and like give him pressure to make a mistake, right? Yeah, that's hard to do, I would I would. Yeah, suppose. it's... It's not like in, you know, moto where you can like, you know, rev it up and all that behind them and try and force that mistake. Right. You can get a little bit inside their head, you know, if they're looking back or... Um, Show them a ski maybe. Yeah. But he, he's, like I said, he's a very talented rider, so none of that gets to him, right? Right. He just, he's focused, he bangs out his spots and he's gone. Insane. Yeah. Insane. So the only way to beat him is to get in front of him. Mm -hmm. If you get in front of him, you got a chance. Didn't he have a problem at uh, Brainerd last year? Or was um, that Grant? It was Sunday, I do believe. I don't uh, think David had a problem. or Somebody had a problem on a Polaris. You came to the final Brainerd. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, oh, when it was raining. 
So I don't think David did because David needed to have a good weekend because he was technically not in the points lead going into it okay. because of an earlier round he had a failure. Um, and he ended up winning the championship because he swept the weekend. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of yeah. course. <clears throat> so uh, it might have been Grant who could have had an issue. Okay. Very possible because Grant's super fast. Yeah. All all you guys are super fast. Yeah, it's getting very, very competitive. And that's good. Right. And if you look at, like, Pro Open right now, one through nine can pretty much be interchangeable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially with, like, my cousin came back this year. He's got a GLH 900 mod. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I forgot Eric Madel is still on an 800 mod, too, Skidoo. Okay. Uh, he did end up taking second in Grantsburg. Mm -hmm. He's got kind of the same sled as me. Okay. So, that kid hauls. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> that, that he's wild to about. watch. Uh, he's all black. Like, looks like Knight Rider out there. Okay. And just like the wildest riding you can imagine. Really? Wide open, never lifts. Dang. Yeah, he gets after it. Dang. Why isn't he racing against you guys? He does. Oh, he does? Yep, yep. So, like I said, he got second in Grantsburg. Um... He's the only other Skidoo Pro. Um, he did already buy a 900 mod for next year, though. Oh, so he's going to players. Yeah, he's that's championship sucks. too. Pretty much everyone's like, if you can't beat him, join him. And I'm like, yeah. No, I want to beat him. Yeah, <laughs> I want to yeah, beat him yeah, on my platform. <laughs> yep. That's funny. That's so funny. So we've been working on getting an 850 stocker to work. Uh -huh. Once we get that dialed, then we'll play around with building an 850 mod um, and go from there. So. Dang, and are any of those sleds turboed by chance or no? Um, I don't believe we're allowed to do turbo in the IWA. Okay. I have raced against a turbo four stroke before. Oh yeah. At uh -huh. an event in Wisconsin, and like I dusted him off the line. Right, it was just a drag race. Yeah. And then also like the last five feet, just like boom, nothing just rocketed past me. Like I wasn't even moving. Dang. It was crazy, and it was like the most Franken sled contraption you've ever seen. <laughs> like, if you see the picture, you'd be like, "You hit the water with that." Like, yeah, right. I think it had like a rev hood just slapped on like an Articat chassis, like wide open everywhere. It just was like sitting there. Oh my god! Brutal. I'd like to see that thing. Yeah, I got a picture of it. I'll show you after. It, yeah, it's the for weirdest sure. looking thing ever. Super <laughs> fast though. But could it corner? I don't think so. No? Not with how wide open it was. No, no. way. Yeah, screw that. Yeah. Screw that. Uh, and, look, and like that event, they had ne they'd only ever done drags until mm -hmm. that year when we went. Um, so they ended up doing ovals that year. And mm -hmm. that's can't, they're going to continue it. Okay. So and that's like where the guy who bought my brother's sled came from. Um, another old IWA guy was there, and now he's back in the IWA. Mm -hmm. So... It's been fun going to like those one-off events, and like I said, we're all about trying to grow the sport. And like your shirt. Yeah, it's actually my buddy Sean Hart. He's part of uh, the Shitty Skippers, like, like Grant Whitaker. Okay. He started up an apparel company. Nice. He's been printing off hoodies and stuff for us. So yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, even at Grantsburg, I think he did like twenty of my shirts and twenty of like the Shitty Skippers, mm -hmm. uh, and then they launched them out of the cannon to kids. Heck yeah. Yep. So. That's dope. Yeah. The, the watercross is all about like the family, right? So absolutely, you didn't see it at Brainerd, but like at every other event, we do autograph signings all throughout the day for the kids. Yeah, see, that's wicked cool. That's wicked cool. Yeah, um, huh. a lot of us have like basically like hero cards, like a picture or something we sign, or mm -hmm. stickers, posters, whatever. Yeah, like a normal, yep. like a normal event. And I honestly, I think the kid up in Ely, Tyler Carlson. Um, believe his cousin or something they've been getting helmets from fxr okay. and giving them away at every event to kids wow it's like, it's like seven to ten helmets at every race so far <laughs> jeez yeah. and so. just giving them away yeah wow yeah. wow that's pretty cool though yeah. that's pretty cool so let me ask you this again i'm i'm new to the whole watercross thing i've had a lot of people hit me up like you you've told me to come out to a couple of them um i think it's Whoever does the social media for IWA? I don't know who's doing it currently because they kind of switched it up. I know they brought somebody in. Yeah. That I think was like doing something with the Sea Boys originally. Okay. I know it's a female. 
She messaged me on IG just a couple of days ago. It, or it even might be the president, Rachel O'Brien. She's the IWA president. No, that's that doesn't seem like. So I don't. Yeah. She know. knows your brother. I mean. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a given. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she she messaged me and she was like, "I want you to come out to a couple of them. I want you to, you know, do some content for the series and stuff like that." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's cool. You know, yeah. I just don't know. Like this season, I told her I was I told her straight up because it was last last we were talking on Sunday, and I was like, I don't think I'll be able to make the the last two. Mm-hmm. What is it, Ely, and then be, well, the last two would be like Lyndon and Brainerd. Yeah, so those." So Ely's next weekend, and yeah. then two weeks after that's like Linden. Yeah, then Lake, it's like three or four until the final one at Brainerd. Yeah, so the last two I wouldn't be able to make, but the the one in Michigan I'd be able to go to. Um, and I think that was the one that you told me to go to, right? That is, yeah. that's, I mean, that's my hometown. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're going to come to it, and you got to come to that one. Right, no kidding, no kidding. Um, but yeah, I told her, I was like, I would only be able to go to the Michigan one, I wouldn't be able to go to the last two because i have things going on you know but. i don't know if the iwa knows yet but we're building a new jump for lake linden really oh yeah oh. and it's Cal's uh, out of the bag yeah it's modeled after the european one right so it's meant to where we're gonna be able to actually hit it with some speed mm-hmm. oh it's so right, it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna uh so it's 12 feet by 25 foot long big guy right oh. nice gradual so uh-huh. you can actually come honking off of it because, like, right now, say, at Grand, you can't hit that one with a ton of speed. Yeah, you, you kind of just crawl You get way it. too much air. Yeah. So we're going to try that, and and we're hoping it's wide enough that me and my cousin want to go tandem off of it side by side. Oh, man. So we'll see. That'd be dope. Yeah. That'd be dope. Wow. Cat, cat's out of the bag, guys. Yeah. New jump. New jump. <laughs> it should be the go-to jump now, because, like, the one we built last year was a lot better than our first one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Grantsburg bought it off of us. What is it like hitting a jump like that? Uh, I mean, like, the jumps, it's pretty gradual, right? It's not, like, anything serious. Yeah. Um, it's just like anything else. It's kind of, it's almost like more of a drop-off. Okay. It would be, like, the better way to explain it than, like, a jump, mm-hmm. um, what the feeling is like. Because, like I said, it doesn't really have a lip. It's just kind of nice and flat off. Right. And just land score and land on the gas. Hmm. You good to go? That's weird. It's weird seeing a sled hit hit the water like that. And it's then a having little it... more rough. I feel like water because we don't really have suspension, yeah. right? Because we crank everything so tight to make it work properly right. on the water. So. So then, how does that work with the whole settings of the of the sleds? They don't really love the jump. No. <laughs> no. Like, so it, uh, last year, I bent the rails in my six hundred pretty good, and David, I think, bent all three of his tunnels. Did he hit the jump with? Oh, if man. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. Was it just the entry or the the takeoff? We were just sending it too far. Too far? Like, wow. The jump initial, so we've... And you guys are running, what, 146s or 130 uh, or something? I think David's running a 146, minor 137s. Okay. Um, most are in that 137 to 146 range. Yeah, There's so that impact would be full of longer ones starting because that's kind of like the European way. Mm-hmm. They like the real long ones. Like, I think Renheim just built a Gen 5 that's like a 159. I'm like, that's crazy. Jesus. It's so long. That's a mountain sled. Right. Holy crap. Or like a hill climb sled. Yeah, and one of the guys on our group has a Polaris 159, and I rode it, and I, I, I couldn't believe how well it handled. I would have never thought that that school bus could turn on the water. <laughs> that school bus. Yeah. That's See, funny. I'm so used to a little 137. Right. No, it was great. Huh. But, yeah, it, felt, it must have felt like you were driving a tractor trailer. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, <laughs> it was definitely long. That's crazy. And what is... Yeah, what about the reinforcements on the on the, the skids or anything? Or on the tunnel? Or the running boards, I mean. It's like... The running boards, yeah, that's kind of another thing because, like, depending on what class you're in, like, mm-hmm. say my 600 mod, for example. I mean, you said we, you, were, you were bending running boards on the jumps, right? So okay. we, we narrowed up my right side, uh-huh. and with that, we lost a lot of that structural integrity, right? Ah. So, like, the first time I hit the jump, went and just kind of bent down. Mm-hmm. So then we had to add reinforcements, and even still, if you look at the sled, they're still... 
like a little tweet. Down. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Like, my brother ended up getting that sled for this year, and he got on it, and he's like, "Everything's bent." I was like, "Yeah, it's bent for speed." <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, it's ready I already to go. tuned it up for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And then what about the skids? You um, reinforce those? We didn't. Per- um, and we still haven't. We probably should. Because, mm-hmm. like, say last year at Grantsburg, um, I was on the line for the Le Mans final, right? Got on the stand warming it up. And my brother was like, kill it, kill it, kill it. I'm like, what? He's like, the skid's all destroyed. It's bent. Oh, I was no. like, we're going. We're- <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the line. Let's yeah, go. I, I will crash before I don't take this final here. <laughs> so, like, I didn't hit the jump during the final just because it would have really been bad. Because mm-hmm. even as it was, like, the first couple of corners, it was so squirrely and washing around. Yeah. Because, like, what we do is we tie, like, the scissor back and basically uncouple the suspension. Like, keep it locked. What? Yeah. Okay. Keep it locked. Um, and... With the jumping, it bent my plates out so that it was free moving in there and like everything was all twisted. Oh no. Yeah. So my brother, when he got the sled, put on the rails and stuff on it and he went all extra fancy and powder coated them and stuff. And he got good enough now that he wanted to run the Le Mans again. Mm-hmm. He's like, but I'm not hitting that jump. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't either after spending all that money. <laughs> You're guaranteed the bend them now that you powder coated them. Yeah, right? Yeah, no kidding. Should have knocked on some wood. Right. That's funny. So with <clears throat> with the water cross and the whole jump situation, what if you don't hit the jump? Do you get like DQ'd or something? No, or? so in Le Mans, basically what they do is there's like a joker lane, more mm-hmm. or less. So you can either hit the jump or take the joker lane. Um, oh, screw that. I'm taking lap. the jump. So most of the time, the jump is faster. Mm-hmm. Um, but like... We all of us figured out at Grantsburg that the Joker line was faster, so uh, we we didn't hit the jump as much. I'll, okay. Um, one, it's kind of hard on equipment. Yeah. But, um, so during the race we didn't really hit it, but then after the race, all three of us looped back around I think twice and hit up hit the jump again for the crowd. Yeah. Just you know you gotta give the people what they want. Right? Yeah, for sure. So. <laughs> that's cool that's cool and um yeah what is what's the the youth like in watercross is it anything like snowcross where you have like smaller classes uh, uh, unfortunately you have to have some power on a slide right? yeah so the youth is still kind of limited i would say right because you gotta be 14 before mm-hmm. you can race um, so you don't have those earlier classes grooming you in, mm-hmm. but there is the new sport open class, um, which has been very good at bringing in new guys. Like I think at Grantsburg there was 26 in sport open. Okay. So are those I, stock? Um, no, 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 they're modded. They can be. Okay. Most of them are running pretty stock. I mean, honestly, that's what the class should be, but they mm-hmm. don't have a classification on it, mm-hmm. you know, cause like when Ava was on it, she was on a. 190 horsepower mod right oh my god it was, it was crazy that's With her, insane for how small her, she is oh <laughs> so fast that sled was crazy no thank you yeah brian knows how the tune like that oh ripped. yeah and they got the bike pin, you know group behind them yeah so there's a as far as youth goes there's not a ton of kids under 18 mm-hmm. um i did notice a couple more new kids recently um that I'd never seen before that just kind of showed up this year. Uh, we got a new kid in our group, Steven Volker. His dad's helped us with mechanics for, for a long time, and now he's old enough, so he's running. Okay. Um, yeah. So it is growing yeah. a little bit you know, each I th- year. I think it kind of goes through lulls, watercross does, right? Because, like, when I was younger, my dad raced, mm-hmm. and so did my cousin's dad. And, you know, we were 10, 11-year-old kids running around you know, the races, and then they got out of it after um, Jeff Moyle died. Um, okay. That's kind of why the Lakeland race is at Jeff Moyle Memorial. Mm-hmm. Um, Makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And especially now his nephew is racing, Dayton. Okay. Uh, Dayton's killing it. He got into it at the end of last year, running Teddy's equipment for a little bit. This year he built a Polaris, and... 
he came Those up. Polaris is. Yeah, right. <laughs> he came up in the pro stock um, and then run semi-pro open, and he won semi-pro open at Grantsburg. So he gets to come race with us in pro open now. Ooh, yep. new blood. Uh, he gets to come race with the big dogs next year. That's sweet. Yep. That's sweet. He'll do good. He's a racer at heart, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's run cross country for years on cats, and his dad has multiple um, Eagle River World Championships ice ovals. Oh, okay. That's where the Moyles are most known. Yes. Yeah. Ice ovals. Wow. So they're kind of transferring over. Yep. Yep. Nice. Nice. Have you ever gotten in an ice oval thing? Never did. No. No, no interest? Uh, Do I would say no plus? interest. I think the most, especially winners now, just no time. You yeah. Know? Even when I I'm, did uh, have to just work all the time, I, I was like mountain riding and like screwing around, like free riding. Yeah. Um, like we were, before I started working at Warner, we were kind of crazy building big, stupid jumps. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of people still laugh and kind of give me crap about it, but we were the ones who jumped the house up in the UP years ago. Really? Uh, we jumped like a four lane highway, <laughs> like all kinds of stuff. I like we're, to see that. Yeah. I'm surprised you haven't. Everyone's seen the house uh, jump video. Uh, maybe, maybe a while ago, but I, that's. I was laughing this year when Pleen and them did it. I'm like, hey, another Uper jumping yeah. the house. Look <laughs> that's at that. right. It only took ten years. Yeah, right. No kidding. We did it in like 2013. Holy crap! Yeah. Wow. Wow. And that just came about because uh, my cousin Jimmy, his dad used to race snowcross and stuff, and he, we're jumping all this stuff, and he's like, you guys haven't done nothing. I jumped a shed before. Like, all right, well, there's the radar base. We know that the snow gets to the roofs. Let's go jump a house. Yeah, right. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, so, man. Yeah, it was fun. That's... We definitely, we were going pretty good for a while there. Um Kind of putting out little videos back and forth against like the, they were like Midwest free rider or something, McKinney. David oh, McKinney David from, McKinney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He works at 509. Yeah. Uh -huh. So after that, then he got with 509 and like that whole group kind of went away too. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, Jay, Jay's still on the team, isn't he? Menaberry? Uh, So Jay's still 509 in Skidoo, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been like M McKinney's little group that he had oh with like okay him and his buddies where they were filming yeah 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 yeah, yeah it was kind of like the same deal with me and my buddies i started a new job mckinney started a new job and uh, the videos all just went no more yeah real life happens <clears throat> yeah that's uh i hate when that when that when everything because that's like that's like the pastrana era the you know that that type of everybody's kind of dips away and then somebody comes in and does it you know, again, and it kind of dips away. It kind mm -hmm. of sucks. Because that's, I feel like that's the freestyle game, too. Right. You know, the whole freestyle thing kind of dipped dipped out. Yeah, so, like, we, kind of, like, at the peak of it, we were starting to hang out with Matt Tinkstad from Mexicon. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, he built this crazy sled park, right? He had a groomer, and we went there, a uh, bunch of jumps on, like, a pole line, at the end of the day, we all hit a super kicker the first time any of us hit a ramp. Uh, so <laughs> nice. that was cool. Although my... That's got to be scary. It, so what's nice about a ramp is it never changes, right? Yeah. Once you do it the one time, it's pretty much you're golden. Consistent, yep. But my buddy Mike Zebert, he was the only one of us who had ever hit a ramp before. He's like, oh, I'll go first. Like, I've done it. Yeah. He sent it way deep. Scariest thing I've ever seen. He fell from so high in the sky to the flats. Oh, no. Oh, it was ugly. And then we're all standing there like, uh, all right, who's next? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Did you guys even go check on him? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he ended man. up loading up and leaving. Um, I don't know if he went to the hospital or not. I, like, his, his feet hurt really bad, obviously, right? Yeah, landed You know, flat. he came from, like, 60 feet to the flats, right? Oh, thank you. If I'm not mistaken, I think he broke the running boards even. And he had like this crazy Garth Kaufman Articat mod then. Mm -hmm. And just ugly. Damn. Damn. I saw a video the other day. You know who uh, AJ, RJ Anderson is? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so his brother, I can't remember his brother's name. Um, I don't know what the heck is his brother's name. Not AJ. Uh, anyways, his brother, RJ's brother. 
he did a video with Nas and Polaris in California, and he hit he hit a ramp, and he like nearly landed on flat. His front wheel like came right on the landing. Ugh. Yeah, and I was just like, that has to hurt. Yeah. Yeah, one of the scariest things is sending it way too deep. Mm -hmm. When you get that feeling when you're just falling out of the sky, to, and you're like, there's nothing there. No, I'm breaking <laughs> my back. back. Yep. <laughs> no, thank you. Even like, even the guys that ride in the mountains, mm -hmm. you know, even that's scary. I remember, what was it, 2015, I started, I started snow cross in 14, and then I went to Na uh, Salamanca in 15. Mm -hmm. Um and I was always watching the the 509 videos, yep. you know, and I would see uh, Jay Manabar. He was down. I don't even know where he was. Um, I want to say in Wyoming, maybe. It was freaking beautiful, though. Very nice. And they they rented a plane or a helicopter to do some filming. And he's, he's jumping over freaking hills with big, huge separations in between, mm -hmm. you know. And he, he hits this one. And he hits the knuckle, and he lands at the bottom. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. That no. ugly. Yeah, no thank you. No thank you. He's wild. It was definitely fun to ride with Manaberry. He's He gets after it. I bet. I bet you got to be on some kind of drugs to be doing jumps like that, <laughs> you know? There wasn't <laughs> much, and there was no jumps that day. Like, uh, we, we never found any, unfortunately, so I never got to see him really do his thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just ripped in the trees yeah. and keeping up with But even that like, is oh, crazy. Good luck. We were sitting there once, uh, Jay took off, the other guide went, and my buddy was there, and then one of the guest demo riders. And mm. the demo rider's like, oh, I'm going to go too. I was like, good luck. <laughs> 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 he made it about 15 feet into the line, and then he hit a tree. <laughs> really? Yeah. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, you probably shouldn't try and follow him, man. No. The that skill dude. level's not there. That dude is nuts. Oh, yeah. I was one time I was just sitting there talking to my buddy, and all of a sudden we just said, Wah! Turn, and Jay's just coming wheeling through the woods. We're like, Where'd you even come from? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's impressive to see him go from from tree riding, you know, and, and then going to mountain riding at Jackson Hole. Mm -hmm. Like, that's even gnarly. Yeah. Mc, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 the guy that passed away, R.I.P. Um, oh, was it? It's not Kincaid. Kin was no. it Kincaid? Kincaid. Or? Yeah. 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 Rob Kincaid. Yeah. Yeah. And then he, Dave McClure is still alive. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Those guys are gnarly too. Yeah. You know. The Black Cats. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of serious heavy hitters out there that a lot of people don't realize. You know. Right. Most people just know Men of Barry or. The major dude that's been around right. for a long time. But there's a lot of guys like Maverick Walker. Yeah, and, that dude's coming up. He's John insane. Jean is like one of the craziest. Like, most people don't even realize it's him, but that GoPro video where it's like he doubles down this mountain and it's like, feels like he's falling forever and just butters it. Wait, is it like a downhill? Yeah. Was it on a GoPro commercial? Maybe. I mean, was, it's like the best GoPro snowmobile video that exists. Like I think I know which one you're talking. For a POV jump. Yeah, I I do believe it's like a step down. Yeah. And then he just like and he like he lands angled on a drift. Yeah. Like crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. I always go back to that video. Yeah, I feel like it's a good hundred foot drop to where he lands. At least it's not. Hundred percent. He's on a skidoo, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely the video. And then like, I think it's in Brop Seventeen, maybe. But it shows some other clips of him jumping, and he's just nuts. He bails on a couple that are massive. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine. And I'm pretty sure even, like, the only reason that that one's on GoPro video only is because nobody busted out the camera yet. Oh, really? I, there and was something the... with that shot where he's like, dude, I got to do it again, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Screw that. Yeah. It's always one and done, man. No way. Yeah. Those dudes are insane. It's nice, though, with the mountains. Is it's a little forgiving, you know? You can bail yeah. off into some serious powder. And but I'm afraid of the freaking of the avalanches. Yeah, I mean, the big thing is checking the reports in the morning and just being smart, yeah. you know? I've set off a couple small ones that are 
you know, just a little rolling, mm -hmm. nothing major. Um, but yeah, mostly just avoid the big faces and check your avalanche conditions each morning. Right. There's definitely ways to do it without running the risk. Yeah. And always staying with a group too. Yeah. You know? Definitely buddy system is the biggest thing in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Never go by yourself anywhere. You need to be with a buddy at all times. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get lost real quick. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Especially after <clears throat> like a, a night of when it's just dumping yep. and the skies are all white. Yeah. In my first time out to the mountains, one of the guys had been there before. And then me and my buddy were new to it. Mm -hmm. And it was funny on the way there, he was like, remember, guys, this is a marathon, not a sprint. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> okay, right. So we trail right up, and then we get we find this trail through the woods, and there's this big, long climb up this hill. I'm like, oh, all right. And I take off up it, and I'm up there for a while. I'm like, well, where are the guys? And I turn around, and Dan's about halfway up the hill, and it sleds at the bottom in the trees. And I was like, oh, what happened, man? I thought this was a marathon. Yeah, all right. <laughs> So we get him out, and then uh, we're riding around up top, and I actually got stuck in a tree well. A buddy was helping me, and we get out, and we couldn't find Dan for, I mean, it took us two hours to find him. He ended up in an area that luckily a random guide was coming through, rode his sled out for him because he couldn't get it out at the time. Oh, crap. Yeah, and then we, f we found him on the trail. We're like, man, you know better. Like, you've been here before. Yeah, right. What were you doing? Right. I mean, I think we were unprepared to. I don't think we had radios back then either. So, oh. like, that's pretty crucial. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Is it, are the radios in the helmets? No, no? It's, it's just, like, the walkie-talkie, and they work okay. Yeah, yeah. Definitely not great. I would have them in the helmets. See, the you just don't get the range. Mm -hmm. Um You know, like, when we do demos, we do run them in the helmets. Yeah. Typically. The rugged radios? Uh, I think that's what we switched to now, but back when I was doing it, we were running like the Cena's. Okay. Um, which did all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely want to have it in the helmet because it'd be like kind of, unless you're stopped and you can, you can walk eat in, but they make the headsets. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. It's probably the way to go for sure. hundred <laughs> percent. And then yeah. maybe having like a little button on the, on the handlebars or something. I think they have started to do that with this, like the like the Moxie, the new Skidoo's. I think they got to push the talk on them. You see, that's sweet. Yeah, that's sweet. Freaking technology. Yeah, coming a long ways. Oh yeah, coming a long way. Do you know a guy named um, Captain Chaos? See, I've heard of, but I've never met him. I just know like he's got quite a following. Yeah, right? he's huge. He's like one. He's like one of those secret backcountry guys that nobody knows about yet. Yeah, he's. He's a he goes to Hades every year. He's pretty big. He's a pretty okay. big dude. Yeah. Yeah. There's like there's a lot of those guys that no one really knows, but they they get after it. I'd like to see him on a watercross sled. I would love to get some of those big guys to come try it again. Like I know Manaberry tried it a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, in like five hundred nine, I think they had a little segment in one of their videos where he tried it. Yeah. Um. But it'd be fun to get those guys to come back and do it again, right? Hell yeah. You know, like, it's cool that Renheim's getting into it. And yeah. Like, in Europe, watercross is big. Is it? Yeah. Okay. They still, they got big events that happen. Huh. Yeah, hopefully. Is it like the world championships that big over there? It's probably bigger, to be honest. Really? Well, yeah, that is Snowville country, though. Yeah. Like, they don't got nothing else besides snowmobiles and cross-country skiing. And mountain biking. Seems to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. You, you remember uh, Johan Lidman? Yep, yep. Yeah, I still talk to him once in a while. Nice. He's a good friend of mine, yep. There's a lot of the best content, I feel like, comes from those guys overseas, you mm -hmm. know? Like Andreas Bergmark and them, mm -hmm. Pontus Lou. They're nuts. Yeah. They're always sending it. And... <laughs> Even the guys from uh, from Iceland are pretty big, too. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that can rip, but I don't know. They just don't get their stuff out there to enough people or something. No, no. It's tough. It's a tough thing to break into, I feel like. It is. got to be dedicated to it. Yeah. I mean, I've been trying forever. It feels like <laughs> it got nowhere. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I get a lot of compliments of... Of people saying how much I post on social media, because I'm sure you you you're very aware, but I do like pretty much every day. Yeah. 
there's like a couple couple times that I take a break because I just need you know it's too much right. on my brain and my eyes it's just not- looking at a screen all day. You know, I just want to relax. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a full time gig. Oh. You know, there's, even like with our racing page, I've tried like I've given everybody on the team like access to it to yeah. post. It's just nothing. Me. It's just me. It feels like <laughs> crickets. Right. right? And it's like, I don't know what to say each time. And like, like you said, to actually do it right, you need to two, three posts a day. Mm-hmm. That's where you get the algorithm and that's 100%. where you, you get the traction going, right? Yeah. And like I said, it's basically a full-time job. It is. Especially if you're developing the content too. Yeah. You know? And you got to stay up. Pro- and yeah. You that's s- what I lose is the editing. I'm like, I can't yeah. do it. It's tough. It's tough. Like some, like those CNA videos that you were talking about earlier, yep. those are just done on my phone. Like I don't even put them on my computer or nothing. They're just on my phone because I want to get them up really right. quick, you know, because they're sponsored by CNA. So it's like I want to have that content available immediately. And there's so much more that I'm going to be doing. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to be doing GoPro fo- footage. I'm going to be doing those racer updates again. I'm going to be doing the chasing winner thing like I did with Peltier. Yep. Um and then yeah there's so much more but i'm awesome. only i'm only one guy right. you know i like uh, going back to what i was saying people ask me how how i do it all i just do it mm-hmm. i'm a freaking i'm an animal you know what yeah. i'm saying um and i just want people to like your shirt says like we we're saying grow the sport i feel like my opinion and throw you throw your opinion on it too that snowmobiling is like kind of get pushed to the wayside a little bit it, in, even in any kind of motorsports mm-hmm. you know it's like it's kind of dying off because you, not a young not a of uh, youth are getting into the sport right because one it's too expensive two it's like i'd rather play on my phone and yeah. three my parents don't really want me to get hurt or they want me to go to college and do something else that you know whatever the case may be mm-hmm. but it's like what if you tried it and then you were like, your parents got into it and they're like, well, yeah, all right, cool. Now, now we're into it too. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a guy on, on the podcast last week and he was like, yeah, my dad was all about snowmobiles. I got it in the dirt biking and he fell in love with it. You know, uh, Hagman. Mm. So it's like that, that sort of thing. I think yep. parents aren't, aren't into it because they're, they're not into it. But once they get into it, it's like, all right, this is cool. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, like you're seeing where snowmobile is kind of falling off a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think part of it's the cost of new ones has gone pretty through the roof. Yeah, but that's the right? economy. You can a yeah. car is expensive, right? You know, it's crazy when you look back at like some of the old snowcross videos from like the 2000s, and there's fifty thousand people in the stands. Yeah, like, where is that now? Right. Like, you never see that anymore. I think snowmobiling leaving X Games probably hurt too Mm -hmm. with getting you know just in front of the public eye right um but how many how many people go to x games though now yeah i mean i don't even watch it anymore to be Mm -hmm. honest me neither if anything i just watch the highlight reels right of what's the best whip you know the high jump the freaking quarter pipe i went to x games when it was here and honestly i would never pay to go again (laughs) <laughs> like i just watched the jumbotron the whole time like i'd rather sit at home and watch the tv yeah like, if i'm just gonna be watching the jumbotron anyway right right I mean, you couldn't see anything it was just too far where was it here uh in minneapolis okay okay uh, where they do the supercross and everything i can't remember was that viking stadium yeah yeah, <clears throat> yeah. oh so it wasn't it wasn't the winter time no, it was it was, oh, it was, it was, it was when they were doing okay so like skateboarding and yep. bmx okay Okay. We're like, I went to Supercross there. Supercross was good, but X Games wasn't. I went to Goodyear Supercross, not not last year where or the year before where everyone said they couldn't breathe in there or something. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. was the year before. I didn't I didn't have any problems. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just used to it. Yeah, right, right. No kidding. Yeah, I went there uh what was it, my first year doing Snowcross Nationals. I went there in two thousand and nineteen. It was pretty fun. Yeah. It was fun. We got we got it to go into the Butler Brothers trailer when um, uh, uh, Blake Baggett was on the team. Okay. And all that shit. 
the uh, uh, Woody's was sponsored by um, Bubba Burgers at the time, and they yeah. kind of got us in, and it was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, it was pretty cool. But I don't know. Supercross is different. Yeah. You know? I would have guessed that you could have seen everything from X Games. Yeah, it was... Because it's more open. I think a lot of it was just how they had it portioned off in there, right? So, like, every time it switched events, you'd have to basically migrate to another part of the stadium to be able to see it decent. Oh. I think it was a lot of it. Almost like a... What do they call those? Like Coachella, where you got to go around to different spots. Yeah, it's it like kinda, you're moving stages each time. Each that's kind of events. Lame. Yeah, you kind of had to move uh, to be able to see without just watching the Jumbotron, so... Huh. But... I don't know. Overall, it was good. They had good concerts and stuff. That was probably the best part of it was they had good concerts. Mm -hmm. Like a day to remember was awesome. Hell yeah. So. Hell yeah. How was the, how was the, the uh, what was it, the, when they jump over the pole? Oh, high jump. Was it the high jump? Yeah. I think that's probably like the one event that I watched, right? Mm -hmm. um, from where we were, we could see it pretty decent. Jared McNeil just dominating. Yeah, that guy's crazy. Yeah. Like, some of the whips that he does on his two-stroke, and, like, <laughs> he's the one who hits a jump with his dog and stuff, yeah, too, right? I was just yeah. going to say, it's not really his dog, though. But you like, one hand, GoPro, I'm like, how do you even do yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, he's insane. But I did meet a couple of the Australians. Um, I ended up at, like, a VIP party after X Games, mm -hmm. and I still don't even know how we did, but... Um, Pat Bodine. Okay. Uh, so he doesn't do like X Games and that, but he's part of like the Freestyle Kings. He, that kid has, like, I mean, he's doing like heart attack backflips and stuff. No. And, like, it, pretty much, if you see a, a moto vid or like a freestyle vid and the guy's all white, all white everything. Yes. That kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Wild. Damn. Balls. That's yeah. all I gotta say. Yeah, some some people just they got them. What about the um? What was it Robbie Madison that did the did the across the across the water with his bike? Oh yeah, yeah. He tried it in like the ocean. Yeah. I feel. I think he went through like four or five bikes. So what they don't tell you. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. And but that bike had like so much shit. On I it. saw not that long ago a dude ripping one around. It was in Europe at, like, a watercross event. It was a, a track bike, like, you know, a snow bike, right? Oh. No problem. He was out there shifting gears. I was like, what is going on? What the hell? Yeah. Riding around just fine. Really? Yep. And was he carving, too? Yeah, he was making just... corners and everything. Screw that. Screw that. If something happens, you're just done. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's probably the same thing, just kill the bike, you know, just like us, kill the sled, and if you know you're going in, and yeah. you'll survive. Yeah, but there's really got to leave the bike there. Yeah, I mean, he probably had a buoy or something. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> One would think. Yeah, <clears throat> or like a tracking device for somebody to come and get it. Something. Yeah, because isn't there like a fine if you leave a snowmobile or something in the water? I'm sure. Yeah. Like one thing with our watercross sleds is we have sealed fuel tanks, mm -hmm. so we're not leaking gas into the water when they sink. Yeah. Um, and then like a lot of watercross sleds also switch over to a belt drive versus a regular chain. Oh, okay. Um, a lot of it's just because the environment too. The oil. Yeah. So otherwise, you got to change your chain case fluid all the time. Yeah. And instead of running the risk of guys not disposing of it properly, mm -hmm. IW is like, all right, you can put belt drives on and still fall under stock classification. Interesting. Yeah. So what? how does that modification work with the sleds? Is it just a pulley system? Yeah. yeah. It's just uh, basically another pulley. Okay. Um, instead of having a chain and gears, you got a gear and a belt, hmm. um, which has been standard on the Polaris's for a while, which is oh. another reason why... the the skidoos are allowed to do it for stock mm -hmm. beyond just the epa thing yeah so why isn't there a lot of articats running um there's a handful um but there's really only one that always works consistently mm -hmm. um Is and i do believe version? what she did was they converted it from an efi back to a carb <laughs> i think there's something with the efi sleds the cat ones that just after 
Because, like, there's one guy, right? This sled is super fast, like, right there with all of us in the pro class. Mm -hmm. But I've never seen him actually complete a race. Hmm. Like, lap three or four, it always just goes down on him. Interesting. And there was another kid, super nice kid, when I was first getting into watercross, same problem. Um, seems to kind of be the thing with the Arctic Cats. Uh, is it because the air boxes are in the front? That's probably part of it. Yeah. Um, I think everything prior to that generation works pretty good. Yeah. But I think anything from, like, see that Crossfire F series up is mm -hmm. where they start having the issues. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's only like four or five Articats, hmm. and there's only one that's consistent. Right. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. And then uh, there's only been, what, a handful of Yamahas? One Yamaha, maybe? Since I've raced, only one. Yeah. And that was Billy Bob, and it was all a triple, and it was mostly just uh, screw around type but of thing. McCurdy told me that he, he rode a Yamaha way back McCurdy. then. McCurdy has a Yamaha still in his yeah. garage that after listening to Ava and you talk, I was like, <laughs> hey, man, is that thing coming out? And right? they, they didn't pull it out. Right. So hopefully they will for, like, Reckless Fest, mm -hmm. you know, because that's just a one-off thing. Yeah. And it'd be cool to see because I know Austin hauled the mail on that thing. Yeah. Like, if I'm, I think he won the world championship on that sled back in the day. I think that's what got him bumped to pro was winning on that one. Jeez. So. Jeez. And like Jeff Fisher used to race the Yamahas. Yeah. David's dad. So mm -hmm. they definitely were very fast back in the day. But I think just now with where the players and the skidoos are that they just, they're not in the same realm anymore. Yeah. Right? Because like we go to this thing in Wisconsin called the Crawfish Challenge. It's just a one-off event, and yep. there's a couple of Jeff's old sleds there, two Yamaha triples, and, like, they do all right, yep. but uh, they wouldn't really compete very well at the IWA level. Hmm. I, would you, you, you're, so what you're saying <clears throat> is IWA is, like, the top, top cream of the crop kind of the deal? It seems to be, as far as watercross goes. Um, I know out east they've got, you know, a couple different circuits, and... There's some guys out east that have very, very good equipment, mm -hmm. like super nice sleds. Um, but I think as far as like an organization standpoint goes, I think the IWA is the cream of the crop, okay. right? Because um, out east they've got like this in Epping, the Big East show, yep, yep. massive watercross race that happens there. And I just happened to go to it as a spectator a couple of years ago. It's fun. And just like... Watching throughout the day versus like an IWA event, I would much rather be at an IWA event personally. Mm -hmm. Just it flows super smooth. Right, right. You know, they, they've got it down packed. Yeah, and the guy, the people that run it are racers themselves, right? Yep. Yeah. So. Yep. So like Rachel's the president, um, the former president Michonne Zern. They mm -hmm. race throughout the day. Um, I don't know if Kale, the race director, used to race. I think he might have. Pretty much everybody who's involved either raced or was, like, super close to a racer at one point or, you know. Right, right. So like my understand. dad flags. Yeah, that's but wicked cool. It's good and bad. Like, when I have problems, I sure wish he was over in the pits with us. <laughs> um, but, like, so we're racing on a budget, right? Yeah. So for him to be able to be paid to show up and support us... Uh, cool. It's good enough. Yeah. So. 100%. The good ways out the bad. Yeah. He still gets to be there and not breaking the bank. To and when you win on a 600 over an 850, he gets yeah. to give you the checkered flag. Yeah, I got the checkered <laughs> flag from him. Yeah. But it's also like, can be bad, right? Because like, I'll yeah. come around and look at the laps and he'll be up there like, like at Grantsburg, a lot of times she's like telling me, you know, cool it down, like you're, you're way out ahead, where I'm just like, I'm in my zone, just yeah. doing my thing. And I see him like think or, you know, cool it down. And, uh -huh. But, or like if you screw up, he's like. <laughs> yeah, right, right. 
What are you doing? Uh, and like at Grandsburg, my brother actually crashed really hard directly in front of him, like right under him. Oh, that sucks. So I think that was kind of tough for him to be have to like stay up there and like keep flagging while my yeah. brother's like crawling out of the pond hurt. Right. Yeah. He probably wanted to get off that flag stand and go help your brother. Right. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, because he got like pilot drove into the dirt. Like he crashed in a super shallow spot and the sled just slammed him hard yikers yeah we still don't know how he crashed it's kind of a freak thing like you know nothing like happens just you know, there's no his lake or nothing carb. so a guy went down right in front of him and as he went around him it was right after he got past him so maybe he was awake like kicked a sled or something but yeah this is wild just out of nowhere just huh. tackled him that's interesting and, and there's video footage of it it's just so far away that you can't really tell. Oh. You just see the explosion of water, right? Right. It was just him going down. Yeah. Weird. Mm-hmm. Weird. Just a freak accident. Seems to be. Yeah. What is... Earlier you mentioned like the wakes and how the one guy knows how to ride in all the wakes. Like uh, I think it was Fisher that you said. He knows how to tackle the track or the, the pond. Or was it was it Fisher? Uh, I was more saying that I ride a little different when it comes to okay. where like, most guys kind of just follow. Yeah. Um, I've tried showing a lot of my teammates like the different moves that I do. and But now some of the drivers are catching on and blocking it. Uh. Um, but... Yeah, when, the first time you experience somebody's wake, you're like, whoa, right. what was that? Right. Because, um, I mean, it is very tough to make a move on somebody. Like mm-hmm. it, it definitely takes some planning and figuring out the right angle and time when to do it. Right. And a lot of it is when you hit their wake. Yeah, that's so got to like, be scary. There's kind of two main ways to pass. And it's not like a rut either, right? Mm-mm. Yeah, it's, it's like a wall. Yeah. So, like, one way that you can, or I make my passes is first I'll go to the outside of them, and then I'll cut under and across their wake and kind of skip across to get to the inside. Big thing is trying to be the inside for the next corner, right? Right. So if you can do that, you got a chance. Yeah. And then the other way is if you're already on the inside of them, you come out and match their wake and kind of use that as a berm through the corner. Yeah, that yeah. takes some timing though. That's wicked. Yeah, that's wicked. So let me ask you: Have you ever tried um, jet ski racing? I haven't. I've tried stand up jet skiing like once. Right, yeah. it was one of my jobs back in the day. I showed up and boss like, "Hey, you want to go stand up jet skiing today?" I'm like, "Of course." Right. right? <laughs> so we get in in the canal and I'm riding around. I'm like, "Oh, this is not a problem." And then we cross the break wall into Lake Superior. Mm-hmm. Big mistake. Oh. <laughs> it was like nine foot waves that day. Oh. Like big massive ones. And like one of the guys that was with us was like a pro and he's like hucking backflips and stuff. And yeah. I'm just like getting tackled by waves. <laughs> ended up Rag like a, Yeah, I ended up like a hundred yards down shore with a dead <laughs> jet ski, like pushing it back to the waves, just getting piled drove. Oh my god. And like the whole time I'm trying to keep it away from shore because it's rocky and I don't want to like get my boss's jet ski all beat up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was sick for like days after that because it was like November. Oh, wearing wet it's suits. super cold. Yeah. Yikers. But I'm sure you'd be like if you if you rode jet skis or, or raced them, you'd probably be really good at it from doing water cross, right? There's probably a decent amount of trance over. Um, mm. But like water cross, I feel like it's similar to like riding in snow, like yeah. mountain powder, but... It's almost like having six inches of fluff with the hard crust under, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, you get that initial feeling of, like, you're in good powder, but then it goes away real quick. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then it just gets, like, that hard kind of slidey. Yeah. So, I mean, like, cornering, you still just, like, as if you're going to carve in the mountains, you bars to the outside, yep. pivot and turn. So the process is the same. It's just how it handles is a little different. Right. Right. And you have such small skis. Yeah. Yeah. There is some guys that do run full size skis that are cut short. Mm-hmm. Like on my my 100 mod, they are full size CNAs cut short. Like a couple inches away from the. Yeah. So they're basically, they're, they're cut to the same length as a mini, but uh-huh. still wide. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so you lessen the slap, right? Or you lessen the. 
I think it's mostly just because of when tucking them in. Um, otherwise, I think it would hit the belly pans. Mm, okay. Like when it does go through a stroke, it would hit the belly pans maybe. Okay. I'm not sure why. It's it, it probably helps with pushing through the corner too, mm-hmm. having less bite and just getting it to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't say one way or the other if wide skis versus skinny skis, which work better. You only use the one, right? And I've got both setups. Oh, okay. So like the 600 mod has the minis and uh-huh. then the 800 mod has the full size. Okay. I haven't tried minis on the 800 mod yet. Um, I'm I've sorry. always wanted to just to see, like see if I can feel a difference. Right. Because I did notice like when I first rolled the 800 mod that I had to put a lot more effort into initializing the corner. Right. Which is probably just because I had extra width. But. It's always something, some kind of science behind it all. Yeah. Uh, and like. That's a proven sled that I'm on, so... Why change it? Yeah, instead figure out how to ride it. <laughs> yeah. It's, I've always kind of been figure out how to ride it versus a nitpicky rider. You know, like growing up, I used to have buddies like, oh, my suspension is wrong, I can't ride. You're like the Ken Roxon. Yeah, basically, you know, and I'm like, dude, you've already got $1,000 suspension, I'm riding stock. Like, how right. are you complaining right now? Right, right, right. <laughs> so I've always just figured out how to ride it. Humble. You're a humble rider. That's yeah. probably a good way to put it, yeah. Ride what you got and don't yep. bitch about it. I've never had the money to like make it great, so figure out how to ride what you got and be competitive. Hey. That's I I think that's a good way to to do it. Yep. You know? You know, I mean like our my initial mod sub, my six hundred mod, the unicorn, mm-hmm. we built that for about forty five hundred bucks. God damn. Yeah. That's cheap. And it'd be David's twenty thousand dollar sled. The one time, only once, so right? So it's still a unicorn, but <laughs> Oh man. You gotta throw a you gotta throw a banana peel at him. Yeah. Right? When he's behind you. Yeah. Hope you'll slip or something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um anything else you want to touch on? Uh I don't think so. I think we covered a lot of it. Yeah. It's- Basically, like I said, there's a lot of guys that are just trying to help grow the sport and get us in front of a more audience and kind of get it going from there. Because it really is. It's a great family-friendly environment. Yeah. Um, like I said, everyone's buddies, and we're all about putting on a good show for the crowd and giving everybody a good weekend. Heck, yeah. So. Heck, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And I want to see the, the sport grow. Yeah. I would love to see it, you know, get full glory you know mm-hmm. it's getting like i said it's grown a lot since i've joined mm-hmm. and i think a lot of it is like my group and thing like grant whitaker Lee and the shady skippers where we're constantly pulling new people in and you know just trying to do a lot to promote it like mm-hmm. grant's got a lot of great youtube videos where he shows people how to build a budget-friendly watercross sled that's awesome there, right you there. know because yeah. he's like He's a mechanic himself, mm-hmm. but I'll be honest, I, I'm a rider. I'm not a mechanic. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Like, my my dad does most of my wrenching for me. Mm-hmm. I'm very fortunate in that sense because I'm not good at it. I know parts and I know sales. <laughs> I didn't learn the third part. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hey, maybe you'll, maybe your your baby girl will, uh, will get into watercross and then you can, you know, learn that aspect of it of, you know, ranching and, and yeah. sled maintenance and crap like that. Yeah. I could pretty much only hope that like me and her have a relationship like Ava and Brian, you know? Yeah. No. Yeah. I'd love to see that. That'd be cool. I, is is the plan it to get her into watercross when she gets older? It, the plan is just to let her do what she wants to do. You know, yeah. the wife's really big in the horses and would love to oh. see her kind of more horses and well, I'm, you got horses too. You just got horsepower. Yeah. You know, a lot of it. I just got a different it. horse. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, whatever she wants. You know, I was, I'd love to see her on sleds and stuff, but if she'll want to, she'll want to. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have a boy eventually, and maybe he'll want to. There you Who go, knows? man. But, I don't know. She's, she's amazing. That's cool. It's crazy how smart she is already. She stands <laughs> up. She's almost walking at seven months. It is crazy. Wow. Yeah. That usually takes like a year. Uh... I think longer from what I've been told. Yeah. But I think a lot of it, why she's so kind of advanced and stable is we got her jumper pretty early. Oh. It's called the Jolly Jump, and she loves it. She will bounce in that thing 
forever. <laughs> then, yeah, I think that's gotten her a lot of her stability and wanting to be upright. Mm -hmm. So getting those leg muscles and strengthened. Yep. That's cool. That's wicked cool. Yeah, she like pull herself up on the couch and like cliff walk the whole thing, like side all the way down the Get couch. Get out of like, here! And she's been doing that for over a month now. It's nuts. Wow, wow! Yeah. I'm just waiting for this to start walking. Heck yeah! I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. Soon enough. <laughs> right. Hey, knock on wood, it's gonna yeah. happen after this podcast. She's crawling already, and she <laughs> she's so fast, trying to keep up with her. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping like, you on your toes. How are you that quick? On You're all gonna fours. need your 600 to keep up with yeah, her. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. Well, I think we're going to wrap up here. We're kind of like past a half, uh, hour and a half mark here. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It happens fast, man. Yeah, I guess so. It happens fast. <clears throat> it says one uh, an hour and 43 minutes. Jeez. Yeah. We talked a lot. Yeah, we did. I wonder why my phone was ringing. <laughs> I, was that your phone or my phone? Mine rang just a minute ago. Probably the wife <laughs> asking where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to tell her that we're having a good time on the podcast. Yep. All right, cool. Well, um, this was episode 15. Uh, thank you, Bradley, for coming on the show. Thank you for reaching out. Yeah. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, check. We can find you on Instagram, right? Yep. Instagram and Facebook? Instagram, yeah, Facebook. Um, so I got both my personal Facebook and then Sled Down Racing. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like my whole group thing. Okay. Um, and then I think Instagram is like Barrett833. Okay. And um, then post quite a few videos on TikTok too. I think it's also Barrett eight three three. Okay. So. Oh, so you're you're pretty much all on all the major ones. Yeah, but well, it seems cool. like TikTok's the easiest one to get views on videos. I don't know why. The algorithm's different than right? Instagram and Facebook. Like, I got one that's just like a thirty second test video that's just shy of a million views. And it's See. Not, nothing crazy. Yeah. But the Russians got onto it commenting and it went. Whoop. <laughs> That's it. You got to get the conversation going. Yeah. You know. Yeah. As soon as a couple people start commenting, that's where it goes. Mm -hmm. but. I have one at four hundred and twenty-two thousand, and it's like it blew up overnight. Yeah, they'll go from like you'll know right away if it's gonna take off. Yeah. Because it'll be like at twenty thousand after a day, and then it, then it you're just, like, okay, this one's going. Because mm -hmm. I think I got that one just shy of a mil. There's like another one that's three hundred, maybe. That's crazy. Yeah. So you're almost TikTok or yeah, TikTok famous. We're trying. <laughs> <laughs> well, hit him up on TikTok, get him some views, get him some followers. Um, follow him on Instagram, follow him on Facebook, TikTok, all the good stuff. Like I said, this is episode 15. Bradley Barrett, uh, huge in watercross. Uh, I appreciate him being on the show again. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for reaching out, and I look forward to seeing you at more watercross events. Um, me coming out there and, and sh shooting the shit with you and yeah. everybody else. It's fun. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. <laughs>